Yeah, hello, I'm Miss Tammy. Um, and welcome to I'm Living With. I'm your host, Katrina Smith, and I have a few questions to ask you if you don't mind me asking them. Asking you, um, Corey, um, if you can um, answer them for me, please. Sure, thank you. You're welcome. Um, what is your um, disability? Where is my disability? Yes. Um, it started a, a few a few years ago when I had hernia surgeries. Um, the hernia surgeries got really bad. Um, um, in 2006, I almost died from the hernia surgery. I had between uh, six to eight hours surgery because I had a abscess on my right stomach. That's why my stomach kind of swelled up over there. And every since all those surgeries, I can't really walk now or or do any work now. And then I end up getting blood sugar type two from being sick. Oh wow. Um. Okay. Um. May you um explain to our viewers what um diabetes is? Sugar diabetes is where um. It can really do a lot of damages on your body if you don't take care of it. If uh, if you eat a, too much of your sugar, your your body um, your body can't control yourself, or you get the um, real weak. You know, after a while, after two hours of eating a lot of sugar, mm -hmm. um, if you can't control your sugar, your blood sugar go real low, which I have had already. Mine went down to fifty seven. Mm -hmm. They say when your blood sugar is real low at 57, you're not supposed to fall asleep, or, you know, lay down and fall asleep. Because I've done that a couple of times and you're not supposed to because you can go into coma. Oh, okay. Um, what is the difference with, um, between type 1 and type 2 diabetes? I'm not really sure because I was always diagnosed um, with type 2 and not type 1, so I really don't know the difference with type 1 mm -hmm. on it, because I never was told. Mm -hmm. They always said I had type 2. Okay. Um, what, is, what is a healthy um, sugar level? My sugar levels um, are between uh, uh, 109 to 116. They told me I could go between 80 to 100. But, um, to get the shots, I have to have 150 on up for the, you know, for the blood sugar needles. I uh, take four morphine pills a day, so it helps me, so I don't have to take needles. Uh, my husband gives me the medications every day, because I take a lot of pills every day. Okay. Um, what were your um, symptoms? Um, I got, I got real weak. Uh, I really didn't know until the nurse came over um, about six years ago when we lived in Stanley. We've been living in Chippewa for four years, and they found out I had blood sugar. It was 297, and it kept going up because I got real weak. So they ended up putting me on medication. Okay. And the fourth one seemed to help because last year it went back up to 250 again. Mm -hmm. So you got to really watch like your your rice. I can't mm -hmm. eat a whole lot of rice like I used to because that makes it go up and certain butters do. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, how did you find out you had a type 2 diabetes? Um, when they did, when they did the blood test on me, mm -hmm. um, that's how they found out I had type 2 because I got real weak. And shaky, you know, tired all the time because it makes you real tired. Okay. Um, um, how how does um it affect you? How the 
does it affect me? Yes. Uh, I get shakes a lot. Um, I get sweats, shakes. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes you get real, real tired. I don't get a lot of headaches from it. I just get really weak and tired from them. You know? okay. um, if I don't get a, a nap at a certain time during the day, I get really weak. Oh, okay. Um, um, how has um, it affected your family? Um, they're learning about this the disability for um, blood sugar. Um, my husband has learned a lot too because um, he never knew about blood sugar and either has my family, so they're kind of learning about it. And um, my brother in law, Aaron, is a, a chef in Minnesota. They used to mm -hmm. live in New York before my brother died, him and my sister, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is a cook and he told my husband some tips of what to use for blood sugar, diabetes, and stuff. And that seems to be helping out a lot. Oh, okay. So there's certain stuff that you can take and what you can't, what you can't eat too, you know. Uh -huh. Okay. Um. How how do you keep your um type two diabetes under control? I have to take uh four pills, four morphine pills a day. Mm -hmm. That my husband gives me. Um. I gotta. I gotta stay active mm -hmm. and not just sit around, you know, get out and walk and do my stuff, keep your mind busy so that way um, you don't get weak from your blood sugar, you mm -hmm. know, the more you think of it, the more weak and tired you get, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it's hard to explain a lot of it until you're there yourself and then you learn more mm -hmm. from it. Um, like I said, my husband's learned a lot from it too. And I go see a, I see a dietitian too that helps me out mm -hmm. at least twice a month. Um, they give you tips of what to do. Mm -hmm. Whenever your blood sugar goes up, then they tell you what to do. When it goes down low, you can't do nothing. When your blood sugar goes real low, you can't really do much. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to take like bread and, um, like a sandwich and milk instead of candy. You take a sandwich and milk to get your blood sugar back up. Okay. And a lot of people didn't know that. Okay. Um, what advice can you um, give someone who has found out they have type two diabetes? What do they got? What do they get? What do they give? Is that what you ask? What What advice can you give? What advice to yes. give? If they find out that they have, uh, if their blood sugar goes real low, don't eat uh, a candy bar and orange juice because that'll make your blood sugar go skyrocket, double it. Mm -hmm. uh, you take a glass of milk and you have a, some kind of sandwich with bread, you know, with a certain kind of bread, whatever bread you can eat. Because if you, I found out if you eat candy with it, mm -hmm. an hour later your blood sugar will go more than what it's supposed to, instead of rising up a little bit the way you want it to. So kind of just be careful on how much candy and orange juice, that certain kind of orange juice that you take for your blood sugar. Because okay. uh, we, we've been learning on that. Mm -hmm. hey, how has your um, disability affected your way of seeing other people living with different disabilities? Um. I, I guess it's hard to, um, because there's sometimes I wish I could be like them, because mm -hmm. I'm having trouble with my left leg with my blood sugar right now. I can't get out and walk too much because mm -hmm. it gets numb, mm -hmm. and they're making sure I don't get, um, I forgot the name of that for your blood sugar that you get in your leg. Mm -hmm. um, they're keeping a knock on it so you don't lose your leg, you know, a few years down the line, because it's getting worse with mm -hmm. the walking and stuff, so, I, yeah, it takes a lot out of a person because you get angry because you can't be like other people, you know mm -hmm. what I mean, you can't mm -hmm. work, you can't get a job, um, it, 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 it's a lot of depression. Okay, um, excuse me, uh, how, how would you motivate other people to come out and talk about their disability? 
one is best to let other people know so that way you don't keep it to yourself because if you keep things to yourself, it, um, you want to help others so that way they're not depressed and lonely so this way they can help each other out. Other people can learn from other people from their sugar diabetes. You know, you learn from a lot from other people. Mm-hmm. And that's, I, got a lot of, I got a lot of friends that got blood sugar diabetes and I told them they got to start talking people to get it out more, you mm-hmm. know, instead of keeping it to themselves and not be shy. Mm-hmm. The more shy you are, the more you won't know, you know. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, is there anything else you would like to tell our uh, viewers about diabetes and how they can um, bring more, um, more awareness to diabetes? Yeah, if you think that you have sugar diabetes, I wouldn't mess with it. I would go get it checked out. Like if you get dizzy a lot and you get real weak mm-hmm. and your hands get real shaky, like you know, like this where you're shaking a lot and your body starts shaking, mm-hmm. I wouldn't hesitate to wait within that 24 hours if you could go on a coma. I would be sure that you get checked out right away instead of waiting on it, okay. thinking that you might not have and you might have up. You know, that would be my best policy to get it checked out as soon as you can, then, you know, mm-hmm. so that way you don't end up in the hospital with a cold mud and stuff. Okay, um, that's all for, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you, Miss Tammy, for sharing your story on living with, with all of our, uh, with all of us. Thank you. Thank you and have a good day. You too. Bye. Bye-bye or that has um, special needs and is willingly and openly about sharing their story will come share it here on Living With. Love to hear your story.